Wild Dog, DC's lesser-known anti-hero. First seen in a miniseries in September 1987, the name and habits of Wild Dog initially projects an image not much unlike what is hidden in the pages of the miniseries he was a central character of. A masked man in a football jersey with an apparent desire for vengeance whose identity was long doubted to be hidden amongst a group of friends, all hints at a multi-fold mystery enveloping all those around them. In due course, we meet the four prospective wild dogs, all in different situations and life settings. But who amongst them is wild dog? No one really knows. Is it one individual or a whole team? So the plot thickens until it thins out, giving us the beauty that the story truly is. Wild Dog is not so widely known in the comic universe, and we seek to change that about the largely considered wildcard character. DC loyalists need to know him as more than just an impulsive, passionate vigilante who was seen in 2016 as a 5'8", blonde, blue-eyed man joining the ranks of Team Arrow. Now before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. This is Christian J. Thornton. Wild Dog, First Sight, and the Comic Lore it's all chaos in River City as criminals run wild on the streets, making a mess out of the beautiful, livable place. Lo and behold, appears a man who has a laughing red dog on his football jersey, camouflage pants, huge combat boots, and a mask to hide his face seeking to rescue River City from its woes. The comics, however, just go on attempting to prove the phrase, eh, well, sometimes the pain of the cure outdoes the disease itself. The writing actually is quite well done to the point where the evil characters seem to be a part of our daily lives. That is to say, regular behavioral tendencies and natural scenes we might just see as happening in our day-to-day -day lives, and we find ourselves rooting for the man who is basically committing homicide at every chance he gets to attack a wrongdoer. Issue 1-4 to four of the series came out in 1987, before Wild Dog appeared in Action Comics Weekly. The comics open with one Miss Susan King, a journalist reporting on the opening of the River City Community Center. A hostage situation arises as she interviews Mr. Newell of the Committee for Social Change, and Newell admits to being a terrorist. He tells Miss King that he will give a true interview, but with the standards of privacy and safety that he deems fit. The journalist and crew are taken hostage into the theater, and a fresh broadcast of the interview begins. Reporter Lou Goddard, Police Lieutenant Andy Flint, Mechanic Jack Wheeler, and a one Graham Galt are then shown listening to this overtaken interview in different settings. It all unfolds to a superhero in full gear, mask, camo pants, and combat boots barging into the theater and killing all the criminals on sight. As Miss King is rescued, the SWAT is ordered to shoot our hero on sight as if he were a wild dog on the streets, earning him his nickname as we know it to this very day. Susan King then recounts the tale of her abduction and following ordeals, as her interviewee is Police Chief Davis. This man insists that Wild Dog's vigilante justice outlook is outright nonsense and won't allow law to take its course, which is why they are hunting him down. Very familiar viewpoint from real life now, isn't it? Moving on. Miss King eventually decides that she wishes to dig deep and hopefully encounter him who goes by the name of Wild Dog. Susan, however, is not exactly met with friendliness as she goes out on her adventures. So, she resorts to what can be politely called keeping an eye on her suspects. At this point, all the law enforcement being boasted of is pretty much in Wild Dog's hands, it seems. Not much is talked about until the four suspects, Lou, Andy, Jack, and Graham, who are revealed to be friends since college and played football together for the same team, are seen hanging out and doing some good old-fashioned catching up on a boat, Dixie Bell, being side-eyed by our familiar pal, Miss King. Graham tries to reason with the others 
pointing out to all of them that they all have reasons to be Wild Dog, as he shows them all gifts that he brought for them, all of which are things associated with the Wild Dog. The boat reaches Arsenal Island, where all five of them come off the boat, but Miss Susan stays away from the group of four as they extend their talk about who amongst them is Wild Dog in real life. True to the essence of the superhero tale, adventures follow them here too. Needless to say, the identity hiding had become an expensive affair in terms of damage of property because Wild Dog loves blowing things up it seems. But hey, we've got ourselves a hero slash anti-hero slash villain giving us page after page of jam-packed suspense action. In the last installment of the miniseries, we have a throwback of the first one as Miss Susan is reporting again. It allows the reader to introspect while making the overall background discussion appear natural. Meanwhile, the four friends, Andy, has already tried to coax Susan to spill the tea on what she knows about Wild Dog, and he could only really manage a, it obviously isn't Graham Galt, out of her, and have internal conflicts where they accuse each other. We get a more detailed insight into each of their origin stories, and money is almost set on Jack Wheeler being Wild Dog as Flint catches up with Galt and Lou and reminisces happenings in their lives that may encourage a desire for vengeance within them. The story spun around a college kid, Jack Wheeler, who has a football scholarship, starts making sense word by word. Having been plagued by an injury, that career collapsed for him, and to complete his education, he enlisted in the U.S. Marines. Tragedy struck once again when most of his team was wiped out by a terrorist attack following which he chose to return to Quad Cities and attend night classes. There, he met Claire who is a fellow student and unbeknownst to him, the daughter of a crime boss from Chicago who she did not want to be associated with any longer. While on a date with Claire, she was shot dead in front of Jack's very eyes. Claire left everything she owned in Jack's name, inspired to become Robin Hood, but like instead of distributing the privileged riches money to use to fight the mob, Jack made his plans. Carefully enough, he adopted the public persona of Jack Wheeler, the car mechanic. And just like a man with a plan, he made a costume out of his old football jersey with a red dog that has his protective armor, camouflage pants, huge combat boots, and a mask to hide his face. All set up, he not only found the gang and ended them. That killing spree list of his included a gang leader as well and the hitman who was hired for killing Claire. Wildly enough, the combat boots gave our dear, dear Jack away, since the sighting of Wild Dog on Arsenal Island described a man with those on that very day. Jack was the only one wearing them. While Flint says Jack is now wanted by law enforcement officials, Jack smirks and corrects the want to need. As the radio announcement near them reports another terrorist attack, the comic closes with a hint of Jack and Andy coming together for a good cause. Following the conclusion of this inaugural miniseries, his exploits continued in the serialized action comics weekly and finally in a Wild Dog special. Wild Dog, outside the miniseries, Arrowverse, and otherwise. Writer Max Collins gave the character his form known for today, serving as the modern version of Azoro, the Green Hornet, and the Shadow since issue 119 of Amazing Heroes came out. Artists Terry Beatty and Dick Giardino did justice to Collins' writings by giving the reader an image to go along with the powerful aura and lines. Alternatively, hints of Wild Dog being an important character are seen in several instances, which is why we chose to discuss his impact on the DC Universe today. He had a DC rebirth in the gang Wild Dogs, which seemed to have been formed around the aura of Wild Dog in Green Arrow's issue 18 in 2017. Their villainous nature is set in their motto as a libertarian militia inspired by some nut in the Quad Cities. Now Green Arrow tackles them effectively, but that's a story for another time. That aside, Wild Dog has been a regular in the running series Cave Carlson Has a Cybernetic Eye, where his attire and personality are extremely similar to his pre-infinite crisis incarnations. He is portrayed as a full-time mechanic and part-time vigilante, also Cave Carlson's buddy. 
The most notable deviation comes in Season 5 of Arrow. Wild Dog is entirely different from his original counterpart. The show is led by one Rene Ramirez, played by Rick Gonzalez, an ex-Marine residing in Star City who falls into a depression and is plagued by alcoholism after his wife is the victim of an accidental killing spree conducted by his drug dealer. Having lost his daughter to Child Protective Services soon after, he watches Green Arrow on television and gets inspired enough to become Wild Dog with all the traits of seeking vengeance and having a vendetta. The Green Arrow himself attempts to deter him because he disapproves of the methodology adopted by Ramirez, ending up with the Green Arrow and Wild Dog working together towards a common goal, taking the path of the right thing to do. Wild Dog the OG creator's woes. In a wildly infamous incident brought to light in 2021, Terry Beatty, who is on the co-credits of Wild Dog as one of his makers, strongly criticized DC Comics for commercializing Wild Dog in a frankly insane and unnecessary manner. In the upcoming series Suicide Squad Get Joker, Wild Dog was sought to be depicted as one of the misguided rebels who attacked the US Capitol building on January 6, 2021, and was imprisoned for the same before Suicide Squad and Red Hood were on the hunt for Joker and sought Wild Dog's help. Wild Dog is also seen unabashedly talking about defecating on the table designated for the Speaker of the House and disregarding the authorities as well as borderline abusing them. Several parts of the project by Alex Maley and Brian Azzarello were posted by Bleeding Cool, and all of them threw similar light on the Wild Dog situation. That bothered Terry to a great deal. He claimed that the portrayal was appallingly twisted and vigilante justice had been stretched to a point where it was almost reworked. He would not recognize the wild dog he and Max Collins had initially created. To them, Wild Dog wasn't an idiot who believed in conspiracy theories, but actually a man that was driven to do what he did, backed by very human emotions, and something almost all readers have faced at one point in their lives, a choice to do right by oneself with or without taking into account who else would be affected. Beatty's disapproval was rooted in his belief that a person of color's portrayal of characters on the CW TV series made the situation much worse. The character now associated with a real-life individual would impact people's thoughts if shown as a moronic, violent goon leading an essentially racist mob into authoritative grounds and validating its destruction. He would never be seen as a hero ever again, vigilante or not. Wild Dog, his unique superpowers. Superheroes are obviously synonymous with superpowers, and in the DC Universe, it is our special man, Wild Dog, who has such unique ones that they get you wondering if he is someone you could befriend and have known all your life. He is not the first one in the DC Universe who is that way and will perhaps not be the last one, but the fact is noteworthy regardless, as it is common to all of the Team Arrow's new members. A man blessed with superior physical strength, bashful bravery that can be called borderline insanity that adds to the much-loved action in the comic and intellect. It is those qualities that have him sailing through the worst of challenges. His weapons do come to his aid, but that's about it. He is an absolute loyalist to guns and knows a lot about them. If not seen carrying one in each hand, he definitely has one pretty close to him at all times. Excellent at hand-to-hand -hand combat, he is an exceptionally talented gunman and very less likely to miss his target. Stun gloves adorn him as well, as if guns weren't enough, these little things with electricity shoot through them are enough to take any enemy down. He wears an armor that hides underneath the dog logo on his shirt, but once again, it's not exceptional and merely durable against regular attacks. A utility belt with some extra gadgets and extra ammunition completes the look and powers of this man. Wild Dog Wrapping Up Starting at the start as we should, Wild Dog was long made a passing punchline in the DC Universe before the miniseries was developed. A lot of these plots and his preparation for the challenges in his own series are oddly convenient, 
but it is a short, fun, enthralling, mindless ride through and through. The reader can even relate with Susan King to the extent that we only know about as much about Wild Dog's identity as is on the page, and can only further guess wildly. A little side note. The professional struggle and commentary on that from Miss King is seriously relatable at times, and as far as her presence in the comic is concerned, her involvement in the first installment seems like it could either tilt in favor of Wild Dog or otherwise. Her questions during interviews while her research on Wild Dog mirror the questions of the readers, and that's a good play on the plot by the writers. The violent but silly and fun violent eases the readers out, pretty much until the end of the comic series. They managed to do a great job of keeping the identity of Wild Dog secret until issue 4 in classic 80s comic style. And by that time, it's honestly all unraveled and expected. The wild, violent, frightening dog is now hailed as a hero with slightly jarring methods of action that manage to settle the nerves of those who seek immediate justice. Essentially, he does nothing wrong. It's the moral turpitude and impact of his actions that enable the rational side of the brain to ask questions. Is it pure evil and spite? Or is it just the right amount of necessary evil that is being propagated? At one point, you could even wonder if there's more than one of the wild dogs in red doing the deeds of vigilante justice. Once you realize, however, that the side character amongst the four friends who is the least needed wouldn't really matter if missing, the mystery of identity solves itself. In striking contrast to other superheroes in the DC Universe, he isn't caped or fancy otherwise, and looks, you know, the most relatable and realistic out of all of them. And if you liked our content, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. We'll see you later, everybody.